Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to wire an aftermarket subwoofer amplifier into your 10th generation Honda Civic. Now, what we've got behind me here is of course my 2017 Honda Civic Type R. And you guys may recall from a recent video that I posted this past summer that I actually replaced a stock sub with an aftermarket direct fit eight inch Rockford Fosgate subwoofer uh, while using the stock head unit. And although the sound was improved, that the sub still lacks the amount of power that it needs to really give it that nice thumpy bass. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install an amplifier as well as an audio control LC2i with remote gain control. All right guys, so before we run our amplifier wiring, we're gonna have to remove a bunch of trim pieces that run all the way from the driver's side kick panel all the way to the rear hatch area. So what I'm gonna do is just remove this driver's side door trim panel. And we can do this by lifting up, just popping these off. And then to remove the driver's side kick panel, it's just held in with a series of pop clips. But before doing so, we need to lift up this rubber gasket, right, because there's some hooks here that sort of hold it together. And then we're just going to lift up on this bottom edge and then carefully pop that out. And sometimes these little pop rivets um, get stuck inside the panel or on the inside the sheet metal. So you just have to pull them off and slide them back on. So once we've taken that out, we now need to take out this center column cover. And then pulling back the door seal gasket, again, just to detach it from the hooks here. Do the same for the rear. Just carefully pull this back. Then using a 14 millimeter wrench, we're gonna undo the seat belt bolt. Now, before we can actually take the center panel out, you'll notice that there's an overlap here on the back seat floor area. This panel can actually come out as well. And we can just do that by carefully pulling up on it. And then lifting the panel out. With nothing holding the center column piece in, you can lift up on the front edge here, and pull the panel away. Which will then expose the entire channel from the front driver's kick panel all the way to the rear seat area. Now to gain access to underneath this dash sort of switch plug located by the traction control button, we're going to have to pull just a portion of this lower dash forward so I can use my finger to pop that out to install my um, gain control knob here. Now I couldn't show you guys earlier how to remove this upper dash panel because I didn't have my headgear harness for my uh, GoPro, but I do now. So you can see I already ran this cable by just fishing it up through the back of the dash and out of a hole. But to take this lower panel off, it's really easy. You just have to grab the lower edge, give it a good pull forward, and then pulling the dash straight out like this to detach it. You can just go ahead and pop out one of the switch blanks just by pushing the tab and then working it out of the hole. Now the next thing we want to remove is the trunk floor and that can be accomplished by undoing a Phillips screw on the left and on the right. And to gain easy access to this, we're just gonna flip our seats down. Using a flat bladed screwdriver, we're just gonna flip up the little door that conceals the screw and remove the Phillips screw. And this whole piece just lifts right out. Do the same for the opposite side. There's a friction clip right here and right here. We just carefully lift up to pop this off. Now in order for the wiring to be fished up underneath the seat, we're gonna have to lift off this flap that's on the rear driver's side 
area. We can accomplish this by taking a trim pry tool and just finding the little plastic friction rivets and just lifting it off in three spots. Which then exposes this channel area that then allows you to fish the wiring up. So, when the kick panel's removed, you follow the hood release cable right here, and you'll see that it passes through a grommet at the very top here. Um, and we want to feed like an either an 8 or a 10 gauge wire, uh, depending on the amplifier size that you're using. Now, to feed a power cable through that rubber grommet can be a bit of a nuisance because it's rubber and it's grippy, and therefore it's going to snag onto that cable at any opportunity it can. So here's a useful tip that I actually got from the Civic uh, X forums from a member called UFO CTR. He suggested that you take a big pen and you take out the insides and then you cut it at a 45 degree to make it into a point. And this is basically like a tube that you would push through the grommet and then you would then pass your eight gauge cable through that. And I verify that my power cable will pass through this with relative ease. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get underneath the dash, I'm going to push that into the grommet and then feed my power cable through that. And when I'm done, uh, I can just remove this and then everything's nicely secured. So that's what that tube looks like from the pen pushed through the grommet. It took a little bit of uh, effort to get that in there. And once you get it in, like you shouldn't have to really force it, but you had to kind of wiggle it and kind of pull it in and out a few times to get it past the end of um, that long grommet. Feed my cable in through the pen like that. So as you can see from the engine bay on the driver's fender, that the cable's popped out. So you can reach down in there and just pull up the cable towards the battery area. Don't connect anything yet um, because we still have to install the fuse and everything else. Once we've got a good enough amount of cable length, we can go ahead and pull our little hack tool off of the power cable. Now, with the switch plug removed here, we need to route a standard RJ11 telephone cord um, up inside the dash uh, all the way to the back of the car where the amp's gonna be and the LC2i. All right guys, so now that I've got the power wire and our sort of control line wire um, routed here, what we need to do is we have to be able to fish this, both of these cables back through underneath the carpet Okay guys, so this is what the switch blank looks like when I removed it for the car. And I've actually already pre-taped 
to mark where I want to drill my little hole um, for this potentiometer to pop to pass through. Now the base control knob I'm using is actually the audio control ACR1 um, and this is a really gigantic switch um, so we have to actually dismantle the switch by undoing pulling the knob off and then undoing this uh, nut and then undoing the two Phillips screws holding it together. And the idea here is that it allows us to just mount the printed circuit board, which is this little piece here. And it's got a little LED, um, but I'm not actually gonna drill a hole for the LED because it's gonna be blinding. I'm gonna bend this up so it's out of the way and then just pass the potentiometer through the switch blank. Now, you'll notice that the width of the printed circuit board is really wide. It's so wide that you'll never be able to get the switch in because these little flex wings that hold the uh, switch blank in place can't move if the board is as wide as the switch blank. See? It doesn't wiggle. So what I need to do is I need to get creative and mount this board at a 45 degree angle. So here's the switch blank. And then I'm going to put this board in at a 45 degree tilt so that it clears um, these little friction wings. Now, I've already taped where I want the knob to be, but I'm going to use a little push pin to pre-mark my hole. And this push pin coincides with where I need to drill. Um, you just have to kind of screw with it. If you kind of look at where this potentiometer is going to sit, that's why the hole is where it is. Now, depending on the base knob you use, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm just going to push that through. And because it's the audio control ACR1, it says to drill a 7 millimeter or 9 30 second hole through this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to progressively drill a larger and larger hole so I get a nice clean cut. And then we're going to have to use either an X-Acto knife, hot knife, or a Dremel and we're gonna have to core out all this crap in the switch blank. So here's a real stupid thing guys with the ACR1 is that because of how it sits on the back of the switch blank you can see looking straight on that it sticks out sideways and so that's gonna be a problem because that's not gonna clear the dashboard hole very well at all. So um, not to fret, we can take the potentiometer, remove it from, don't mount it in yet. And then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna pull to remove our dash panel. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trial fit the potentiometer so I know which way to orient it into the dash. And I'm gonna pass it, plug it in to the remote sub control cable. Snap this switch in, pass it through the back side. Like this, and then just put our little securing nut on and then just using a pair of pliers, very carefully snug up that nut. Pop your dash cover back in. We have to take off this top trim piece here. And how you're gonna do this is you're gonna grab the bottom and just lift up to take it out like this. Then the next thing you got to do is we need to remove, in this case, my cargo cover out of the slot here. We're just going to take a flat bladed screwdriver and carefully pry this cover open to expose that screw. Just carefully pull that out. Undo the screw. Now once that screw's been removed, you're going to take your hand and go underneath the carpet liner up along the seal. You can feel the little plastic clips and you're just going to tug at them to release it. 
pull things out. Now once you've separated the panel cover, you're going to have to disconnect the light by pushing this tab down. You don't want to pull too hard because you can damage this. And that exposes a subwoofer. Disconnect the sub connector right here by pressing down on that tab. And then on the sub, you'll have one, two, three 10 millimeter bolts. And then there's going to be a nut tucked in right here um, that you'll have to use a deep socket to get at. All right, folks, so this is what I've done. I've taken two pairs of speaker wires, okay? These are 14 GH cables. One's gonna be my signal to my LC2i, and then the other one's gonna be the signal from the amplifier to the sub. And the reason why there's two cables sticking out of this thing is because I didn't wanna cut any of the factory wiring inside the sub box should I ever decide to put everything back to how the car was stock. So you got your signals coming in here, and then it's this bullet connected, right? Because these used to be connected to the sub, and it's going to feed out to one of these cables. It feeds the LC2i. LC2i takes a signal, converts it into RCA line inputs into my amp, amp power output out here, and then this connects to the sub. I've taken the extra liberty of wrapping everything again in split loom um, tape in this manner, just like how I did with the power cable because I just like that professional look and it also protects the cable from abrasion and um, due to vibration. Before we reinstall everything, I bought a bag of this product called Polyfill. Um, it's used to make stuffed toys and crafts and what have you. And I was told that it's good practice to fill the sub enclosure with this Polyfill. The reason why it's put in there is to I apparently improve the sonic or acoustic capabilities of the speaker. And so you don't need to put too much in. You just need to line the back side of the enclosure. We just put it in like this. And we're going to plug our subwoofer into the bullet connectors that will go to the amp. Carefully tuck all of that in. All right, guys, so this is just the rough setup of how I'm going to have my amp and LC2i set up. So basically, I've got my power cable coming in. I've got my ground cable, which by the way, if you wanted to know where it hooked up, it's actually just right here. When you pull off that back uh, lip cover, there's a ground point, which is perfect. So you run a ground cable. We've got a set of short RCAs that go from the LC2i that picks up the sub signal through this set, right? Remember, I ran a speaker wire. Feeds the LC2i, translates it out to a line out, goes into the amplifier, amplifier then has a signal out that returns back to the sub. So this is a diagrammatic view of the setup in my car with the LC2i and the amplifier. So we'll start off with the battery here. Um, it's already connected to the vehicle ground and then what we did in the fuse box area was that we had tapped off the car's main wiring harness um, just by bolting on our cable over the existing junction point and then basically it feeds up it goes into a 50 amp fuse and then runs all the way directly to the back of the trunk into the positive terminal of our amplifier. Now our amplifier's ground is connected to the ground bolt in the back there just underneath that uh, I guess tailgate cover. And then, to get power over to the LC2i, I just simply put in another positive uh, wire, about like an 18 or a 16 gauge power cable, and then I ran it from the positive terminal on the amplifier into the positive in on the audio control. And then the audio control's ground can either go to the same ground terminal 
as where the amplifier was on that grounding bolt, or you can even run a black cable and also run it back to the amplifier's negative terminal and combine those wires as well. Now, the amplifier requires a remote trigger to turn on the amp when the music plays. So the LC2i has got a really cool feature called remote out positive trigger, where it detects a signal from the speaker uh, inputs and then will send 12 volts down to into the remote trigger on for the amp. So um, one thing you want to keep in mind here is that when you're piggybacking power for the LC2i off the amplifier circuit that you need to install a one amp inline fuse um, just because in case something in here short circuits that it pops this fuse and doesn't melt all this wiring in between these two components. Now as far as RCAs are concerned you'll see here uh, I've got the base output terminal on the audio control it goes out left and right channels and then it feeds into the amplifiers um, line level in and then that wiring I did with the subwoofer where there were two sets of speaker wires, and this is why I drew the diagram that I did so close together, is that before the stereo would connect directly to the subwoofer. And then inside that sub housing, I fanned out those connections where I basically let, or like the speaker connections were inside the subwoofer, but I tapped them out, feed them into the speaker in terminal on the LC2i, and then conversely, a new set of speaker wires to the subwoofer goes directly to the amplifier. All right, so I've cleaned up some of the wiring here um, underneath the amp and the LC2i. And I just double checked all my connections, making sure everything is tight and connected properly. This is what it looks like underneath. I tried to wrap up any of the excess cables as best as I could. You know, there's always gonna be a couple of stragglers here and there, and I'm never gonna be able to trim this perfectly, um, you know, trying to mount it in the manner that I am. So. Um, no one sees it anyways, so we're going to go ahead and just shift some of these wires out of the way and then drop our foam insert back down into the trunk wheel well. Now, oh, uh, it's important too guys that when you're tapping the power off of the feed from the amplifier to feed the LC2i, that you ensure that you install a fuse with a 1 or a 5 uh, amp inline fuse for the positive feed because if this ever shorts out you don't want it melting all this wire and then causing a, a dead short condition which could be a fire risk in your car really important to point that out I'm gonna take some rubbing alcohol and I'm just gonna clean the bottom surfaces of my amp and my LC2i and that just cleans off any oil and junk to allow my mounting tape to adhere better. I'm going to use some of this 3M extremely strong robust tape. I'm just going to put one strip down each side. Okay. Press firmly onto the mounting tape. Just applying a bit of pressure onto it. Really the mounting tape is just there to prevent it from sliding around. We're going to disconnect the negative terminal on our battery to make sure the car is de-energized. You want to connect your amp cable right directly to the positive terminal terminal on the battery but i actually want a slightly cleaner installation and so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to take this positive battery feed and tap it out of this uh, fuse block and i can do this by making sure the battery is disconnected first that's really important and then taking an eight millimeter ratchet i'm going to undo the car's main power cable in the fuse box and there's just that bolt and then I'm gonna finagle the end of my positive terminal such that I'm able to tap it in like this so it's now weather shielded 
and it just looks cleaner in general. Okay guys, so this is what I did for my cable wiring. So you saw earlier that I had installed the power terminal, uh, the ring terminal to the battery feed so that there's nothing on top of the battery. And then of course I wrapped the cable in split loom and black tape just for that added protection. And then I stuck my fuse holder to the inner frame here using some 3M body tape, which is completely waterproof and it's super strong, like it's not even moving. And then I used some foam tape to wrap the edge of the frame, wrap the split loom, wrapped the cable wrapped in split loom with more foam tape, foam tape here. And then I also tie wrapped it to the hood release cable, ran it underneath underneath the hood release cable on this side and then I actually got a tie wrap that has a little sort of pin that plugs into a hole that's in the rail and then it routes all the way down in here if you guys can even see that um, and it doesn't actually make contact with the fender at all or the wheel well it's actually routed almost the same exact manner with the same amount of slack as the hood release cable okay but I wrapped in foam tape just to protect it in case it does so it comes up goes underneath tied in and then foam tape foam tape to protect and then split loom and so the split loom by the way is just again it's another level of protection for the power cable because you know if anything is going to vibrate it's going to be all in here so you don't want your cable to get damaged so once that's all done we can go ahead and hook up top power and test out our amp all right guys so now that our interior is all put back together, it's really important that we make sure that we torque the seat belt uh, anchor bolt that we had removed earlier to 24 pound feet of torque. All right, folks, this is what everything looks like once it's done. I had to do a little bit of finagling um, around, you know, some of the wiring that I used for the RCA interconnects because of just how tight this was. I ended up swapping it with some 90 degree cables. Um, but everything works. I fired it up already. Um, checked the voltages with my voltmeter to make sure that, you know, it's getting the proper 12 whatever volts at the battery to the back. And I've already messed around with the LC2i settings where I've set the AccuBase threshold to maximum. And then I've just basically set the gain on the main to zero because there's nothing connected to it. Base to the center and AccuBase to the center. And then uh, my phase on my sub to just the standard zero degrees um, no gain on the amp because the lctli already has really high clean outputs punch level to the center and frequency eq set to around 75 to 80 hertz so as you guys can see from my video that doing a amplifier install or upgrade on your civic type r with an upgraded sub is neither difficult nor overly time consuming and can be pretty much completed in an afternoon if you've got all your materials ready. Now, some key things to make sure that you do remember is always measure, 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 and plan, plan, plan so that you don't run into any snags. Carefully watch this video and I guarantee you that you'll have a perfect installation. Now, if you guys like this video, consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIY projects. Thanks for watching.